Some days I am humbled by the call that is before me. I think God came in the flesh and wanted us to be present with one another in a really tangible way. That's part of what the church is called to do and that the world is hungry for. I see God, and particularly during my time here, as deeply relational and deeply connected. I see God at work all the time. There are days when out of the mouth of a classmate, I hear a word that I needed to hear. There is a commitment to deep and genuine study. And the faculty are really out of this world in terms of their quality and their ability to engage you in the classroom. Looking for and training our eyes to see the ways in which the kingdom is unfolding. What goes on here is a part of the Spirit's work. Love the Lord your God with all your mind, your heart, and your soul, and your strength. I feel like seminary is that the seedbed to grow and to flourish and to nurture. Here I feel like I'm learning how to love God more with my mind, to think about things, and to be critical in my thoughts about Scripture and how I engage Scripture. Learning how to love the Lord with my heart, you know, and with my soul, and how I engage with people and how I love people. I love living on campus. I love my neighbors. We're going to support each other, and we're going to run this race together. Together, we can see a bigger picture of God that we would not have been able to see separate from each other. When I walked on campus, there was something about the feels like, this is where I belong, and I feel like I will get the nurture and the development that I need. God just doesn't want to use us. God wants to be with us. Everyone that comes to Columbia gets to travel somewhere outside of Atlanta. Some people stay in the States and others get to go to Central Europe or Jamaica. That was a huge eye-opener, seeing how God is alive and working wonderful and beautiful things in places that we seldom think about. The experience in Jamaica led me to take a class on prison ministry here in the States, and that class allowed me to go to the state penitentiary down in Jackson. Everyone that I speak to is a beloved child of God, created and broken, but loved nonetheless. Nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. And if my job is to offer care and guidance to people so that they can make it through to the light on the other side, it's important to have a sound theology and to know biblical stories and scripture to offer to those people in their time of need. A mind has acquired a better foundation on which my faith can grow. Rehoboth was a 60-year-old church. It had the same pastor for the first 40 years. I found many older people, many empty pews, no children other than my own, and one granddaughter. We were able to push forward, break some old habits, break some old structures, grab a new vision that we could commit to, that we felt was scriptural and missional and true to our community and leadership. It's a good energy there now. I wanted to go to a seminary that was known for raising pastors up. The pastors who are raised here, not only are they educated scripturally and theologically, not only are they toughened up and prepared for the prophetic times and the collaborative times of leadership, but they're also given a real vision of what true Christian community can look like. Columbia has always prided itself on being a place where the leaders of the church are equipped. These people are tenured professors, but they seem to feel like they're learning something new from us. Um, and so for me, even in that is modeling how to be a church leader and how to be developed and be nurtured for the next generation. The church does need leaders. And sometimes that means walking ahead or walking up the mountain and taking the risk and coming back to tell about it so that others can journey along with you. I think Christ told parables because it forced us to imagine. Imagine if on Sunday, we were less concerned about the pews being packed and more concerned about the human connection between the individuals that were there. And imagine if 
we went out and crossed the street where several people were sitting on the stoop and you were able to buy them breakfast because you were convinced that they were also made in the image of God. What we're trying to find is that new way of being church that really isn't new at all, that resembles His way, Jesus' way of doing church, in the streets, with the people, whatever that looks like, wherever they are. To truly become the beloved community that we all seek and aspire to, one where the diversity of racial and ethnic and socioeconomic backgrounds can be unified in a common faith in Jesus Christ. Moses saw a promised land that he wasn't even sure existed, and he dragged some of the people kicking and screaming through the waters across the desert to get there. Sometimes leadership is constantly remembering the hope that lies ahead and encouraging those who are scared, who aren't sure, who are doubting, to imagine it, to keep moving forward and trust.